So there's a lot of uh, talk these days, really over the last couple of decades, about the multiverse. Uh, and you know, it's certainly in vogue. Uh, all kinds of theoretical physicists think that uh, there are all these other universes out there without a shred of empirical evidence, as far as I know. Uh, and I guess the question is, is that, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's sort of come to this through various elaborate mathematical determinations. Um, I guess the question is, is, is the multiverse, is this really a, a, a finding or a, a, a conclusion of science? Or is this, does this approach uh, an act of faith, do you think? But there are scientific models. You could have uh, Andre Linde's eternal mm -hmm. inflation, for example, is, is a natural mechanism for making universes. You, you can dream up universe generating mechanisms. That in itself is not a problem. Uh, then if you want to populate those universes with different laws, well, you can do that as well, because we know that the low energy laws that we observe, that the textbooks that we have contain the laws of physics. They're, they're the ones we know and love but they're not like the ultimate laws. They're the laws that we observe at the relatively low energies that we lead, lead our lives. If you go into the heat of the Big Bang, they sort of meld together. So there will be some sort of super laws in this multiverse that would then nucleate uh, bangs all over the place. And uh, the, when these universes cool, they will cool with different sets of laws. You can do all that. You can write down the equations. You can sort of make that happen. But it's only pushing the problem up a level because this superstructure, multiverse or the thing that contains the multiverse still has to have laws. Where do they come from? Did that have a, an origin? Or is it, was it just always there with the laws that just happen to exist forever? Um, so you, you still get into the same problems. It doesn't really help you. There may be a multiverse. It solves some problems. I usually say, two cheers for the multiverse. Because <laughs> I, I think that invoking it, that, oh, we've just explained everything is a multiverse, is really very silly. But it, but it does explain some things quite nicely, but no, no evidence, no. So Ard, do you want to weigh in on the multiverse? No, so I think it's an interesting question. Um, actually, in Oxford, we've run a program called Philosophy of Cosmology, partially because colleagues were noticing that other colleagues were making pronouncements about things that had never been empirically verified. And there's a strong tradition in physics that at the end of the day, you know, there's many beautiful theories that have been killed by an ugly experiment. And so, um, and what I was interesting is, so there is a step of faith in this, which is, a, which is not an unreasonable one, which is that physicists believe in what we call the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. It's very, the idea that mathematics tells us something about the universe, allows us to peer much more deeply into the structure of the universe than we actually feel we ought to deserve. We, we deserve. And, uh, and that has been very successful for us. That's what helped us predict. You know, the positron was predicted by Dirac by taking quantum mechanics, theory of very small things, relativity, the theory of very fast things, putting together, and out pops this thing called antimatter, which is discovered. So we have this history of discovering really fantastical things by thinking about them mathematically. And so then the idea would be, could you extend that to other universes? And so that's, that's the kind of, there's a, there's a, it's a step of faith, but it's not an entirely unreasonable one. But the worry that colleagues have had is if you keep pushing that along, you keep pushing that further and further away, you get further and further away from experiments, you might be completely, utterly wrong. We've had lots of examples of where we thought we were right, and it turned out to be just completely wrong once experiments came. And so then it turns out that what you're doing is something new. It's more like philosophy in the sense that it's, it's hard to empirically verify. That doesn't mean, you know, philosophy isn't just thinking whatever you like to. It's got its own logic, its own rigor to it. And so... It is a new kind of thing, and is it science or is it philosophy? It's a bit. On, it's a bit I think we don't really know what. It is.